My name is Binod Dakal, and I'm from Medical College of Wisconsin. I'm an associate professor of medicine in the division of hematology oncology. I focus on multiple myeloma. Multiple myeloma is a disease that is affects about one person of the patient population in the US. And uh, there is a lot of advancement happening in the multiple myeloma space and the landscape has been changing quite a bit. I will focus on the treatment of relapsed refractory multiple myeloma. So the simple way to, to kind of understand the complexity of the treatment in relapsed refractory multiple myeloma is dividing that into early relapse and the late relapse. So by convention, when you say early relapse, patients who are one to three prior lines of therapy and the late relapse in patients who are more than three prior lines of therapy. In one to three prior lines of therapy, we're very fortunate to have a several highly effective regimens that are, in, that are given in combination. For example, daratumab, pomalidomide, and dexamethasone, pomalidomide, bortezomib, dexamethasone, daratumab, carfilzomib, dexamethasone, isotuximab, carfilzomib, dexamethasone. And in the late relapses, we're again fortunate to have uh, several, uh, several effective regimens that have been approved by the FDA, most, most notably the CAR-T therapies, which is a active immunotherapy against the BCMA. There are two CAR-T that has been approved and in the bispecific antibody against BCMA called teclistamab that was approved last year as well. Now, how to choose the regimens in early relapse, that is one to three prior, prior lines of therapy is dependent on multiple factors, but in particular, dependent on the patient-related factors. That means how old is the patient, what are the comorbidities, if there are any prior toxicities you know, the patient has from the prior treatment. Then disease-related factors, that means you know, how bad the disease relapse is, what is the tempo of the disease relapse? Is the patient um, on maintenance? Is the patient is off maintenance? And how are the high-risk uh, features, if there are any evidence of plasma cytomas? And lastly, the Treatment, treatment related factors. When you say treatment related factors, we, we need to talk about the prior exposure, prior refractoriness to that treatment. If the patient has any residual toxicities from the treatment. So that's how we decided on that. Now, there are multiple regimens that are available. You know, if somebody is on maintenance and lenalidomide and relapsing on that, you want to choose a regimen which is not containing lenalidomide as a backbone. For example, treatment like daratumab, pomalidomide dexamethasone, or daratumab, carfilzomib dexamethasone. Isotuximab, carfilzomib, dexamethasone. If somebody is on off maintenance or is not on any maintenance, you could still choose lenalidomide containing resume like daratumab, lenalidomide, dexamethasone, carfilzomib, lenalidomide, dexamethasone, and so on and so forth. So that's why you have to decide based on that aspect. Um, and for the later lapses, you know, um, as I said, there are biospecific antibody. There are some particular patient population that would meet the criteria for biospecific antibodies. And there are CAR-T, two CAR-T that has been approved. One is called Silta Captagen Autoducil or Silta Cell, which is the study that uh, the drug that we, uh, I mean, the product that we are investigating in CAR-T4. And the other one is ID Captagen Viclucal or ID Cell. And in addition, there are other drugs like Selenex or either is, you know, in combination um, or by along with the dexamethasone and, and bortezomib. Uh, and in both the group, both the settings, I think the, the, uh, the preference is always to use uh, you know, the clinical trials and try to see if the patient can get the access to novel agents. But, uh, but these uh, approved standard of care regimens are highly effective um, as well. 